We are going to be talking about a little bit of a quick lesson today on different ways to graph. Looks a little different. We're going to try recording on the iPad because, you know, why not try something new? Um, these are our objectives. We only have two of them. We're going to start by graphing quadratic functions using the x-intercepts. So basically what this means is it kind of harnesses the fact that um, parabolas are symmetrical. So if I know this is my x and y you know, coordinate plane, and I know the parabola is here. If I can figure out, maybe from the equation, where these two um, x-intercepts are, I'm sorry, just the x-intercepts, then, you know, maybe I could also figure out the axis of symmetry, and I could also figure out the vertex. Just another way that might be quicker than using our standard axis of symmetry sort of way, or making a table, um, some different ideas towards graphing. And the first one of them would be to use the x-intercepts, okay, and how that'll work. And then, secondly, we're going to use something called vertex form. Okay, vertex form is just a different rate of white, right? The equation takes on a different form, as you might guess. And when we answer this question, when we kind of go over this, we're going to finally answer how to move a parabola left or right. Okay, we already know that I can move my parabola up, or down simply by changing the c value, right? y equals x squared plus 2, y equals x squared minus 4. But how the heck do we take this and move it this Ooh, thought that might be cool. It didn't exactly work. How do we move it this way, right? Left or right? All right, so let's move along. Here we are. Um, you might want to go ahead and write down maybe your, your title, but this is kind of a, just a short little lesson, so I called it lesson 2.5. Kind of sneaks in there, oopsie, sneaks in there between two and three. Um, and let's start with factoring form. What are the x-intercepts? You know, you can call it, and I, and I call this different things, it's factored form or intercept form, either one is fine. But the main idea is this, guys. The x-intercepts are very helpful in graphing parabolas. If we can figure out where the x-intercepts are, you know, that makes life easier. Remember that if we have y equals ax, I'm sorry, it's getting used to this new system, ax squared plus bx plus c, we know that the c is the um, y-intercept, right? This here is the y-intercept. But what about the x-intercept? Okay, how does that work? Well, we got to ask ourselves, what do the x-intercept mean? You know, what, is, what does that entail? Well, you want to kind of go over here to this orange box, and it says, remember what we know about intercepts. At the x-intercept, y is always zero. Okay, if we have a straight line, at the x-intercept, maybe here, at negative 5.5, and again, that's massive, at negative 5.5, the y value would have to be zero. Okay, and maybe we have a different straight line, it goes through here. What is the coordinate of that? Well, that's gonna be nine comma zero. The y value in that coordinate is zero. So let's look again at our original equation. We have y equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. All right, what is x when y is zero? So why don't I take this y and I just pretend that it is zero? And hopefully you're saying to yourself, wow, that looks like something I did last unit. All a lot of the things we did in the last unit have built us to where we are now, and now we're saying, you know, oh, I just need to solve it. And it's really easy to solve if you can factor, if you can factor. Well, let's see, x squared has got to come from just plain old x times x. The minus 5, what could multiply to make minus 5, but add to make negative 4? Man, what are the things that make negative 5? 1 times negative 5, or negative one times five. What's gonna multiply and do what I need here? Well, hopefully we're so good at factoring because you had that fabulous teacher that taught you how to factor. So we have x, what is it? Minus five and plus one. So what are the zeros you might start to call them or the solutions or simply, you know, the, the x-intercepts? Well, this would have to be when x is positive five or when x is negative 1. Those would be the solutions. Well, they're also, ladies and gentlemen, they are also the x-intercepts because they are the values when we turn y into 0 over here. 
Okay, so what does that mean for our parabola? What does that mean for our shape? We have x is, oops, probably giving you a c here there. x is 5, oopsie, x is positive 5 and negative 1. Okay, will that help us graph? Most definitely. All right, well, what do I know there? My parabola, what are, there some, what are some other things I know about my parabola? Well, if I look at the a value, the a value is a positive 1. So I'm looking at a parabola that hits the x-axis in those two dots, but also opens up, exactly. So something like that. How skinny and fat is it? Well, that's going to be kind of determined by the vertex. Could I figure out the axis of symmetry? Well, the axis of symmetry is just that. It's the middle of the parabola. So if my parabola hits a negative 1 and 5, the middle of those lines, here's negative 1 and here's 5. What's halfway in between those, guys? Well, they'd have to be... Let's make that near. They'd have to be three spots away. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Ah, oh, it's here. This here is my axis of symmetry. I can get that simply by looking at the, the two x-intercepts and saying, well, it's got to be in the middle. So what is the equation for that line? What is the equation for that line? Well, wouldn't it be where x, see, where x equals 3? Where x equals 3? How can I find the y-coordinate? Of my vertex. Well, that's things that we've been doing for several days now. All we gotta do is plug in y equals 3 squared, I don't need the parentheses, I guess, negative 4 times 3 minus 5. So now it's a matter of PEMDAS. I get 9 minus 12 minus 5. So, you know, just to bring it back to good old seventh grade here, what is my scoreboard I got? 17 negatives and 9 in the positive, so therefore y would have to be negative 8. Does that make sense if it's going to open up? To me it sure does. Looks like it makes sense it's going to open up. So here is my vertex at 3, comma, negative 8. Okay, so now your parabola is really starting to take shape. All you'd have to do is pick one more point every time you pick a point, you get two, remember, because you could pick x equals. I probably want to pick. I can get a good idea. My parabola is going to take some sort of shape like this. So I probably want to pick something in here or in here for my x value. Well, what's interesting is this one. It just popped into my head when I circled that one. What is that dot right there? That's actually the y-intercept, right? Here, this is the y-intercept. Negative 5. So I actually, I don't even need to do any of this work of picking values. I get another point simply by looking for the y-intercept. It's at negative 5. That makes sense, right? That definitely, if I'm estimating where my parabola should take shape, that seems about right. If I have two spaces here, I'll go two spaces there, and that's my other piece. And now I can graph my parabola. Let's make purple for parabola. There we go. All right, and here it is. Okay, so that's another way to look at graphing. Okay, if we look back up here, that was kind of the whole process. You're looking for the zeros, meaning the x-intercepts or the solutions. There's a lot of different things we call them. And we can do that simply by, ladies and gentlemen, factoring. Okay, so let's keep moving. Our next slide is about, you know, how vertex form. It's about vertex form, and we know how to move a parabola up and down, but how do we move it left and right? Okay, vertex form is going to help us identify exactly where the vertex point is of a parabola just by looking at its equation. So, what is actually moving a graph, right? Let's focus in on this picture here. If this is the vertex of the first one and I want to slide it over there, how can I just move, let's just focus on that one point. If I can move that one point, essentially I can move the whole parabola. Right, because all of those points are just sliding over. This one is sliding over here. This one, where's another nice one? This one there is sliding over there. They're all moving over. Hmm, what example? This is just an example, guys. I just cho chose this as an example. This one is moving over. Looks like four spaces. Okay, how can I get my parabola to move over four spaces to the right? Well, let's break it down. I use Desmos to create the tables here. What's hap if I can understand what's happening in the table, maybe I can, you know, figure out what's going on here. So if x is, y equals x squared is my parent function. And these are the, the um, y values. You could also call these the y values. When you plug in these 
five points here. Okay, so what do I really want to happen? The vertex is at zero, zero. What is this over here at, this vertex? And let's see if I can put in the same points. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. This one here is my vertex. When x is zero, y is, actually that's the wrong direction, isn't it? Should be here. Let's just do it point by point so I don't get confused. What is the coordinate of this point, ladies and gentlemen? It's four comma zero, right? X is four, I'm at X of four, but I'm at Y of zero. What's this point there? That one must be at five comma one. What is this one here? That one's at six comma four. What about these back here? That one's at three comma one. This one's at two comma four. Hmm, what's interesting here, ladies and gentlemen? Well, to me, what stands out right away are the Y values. They're exactly the same. And it should make sense. The parabola hasn't moved up or down. It's still just one quick slide to the right. So the y values are exactly the same. But how do I how do I think about taking this and you know taking this and comparing it to that? Well, how does this x value compare to that one? How does that x compare to that? How does that x compare to that? This one and this one, this one and this one. Any ideas? Well, if I wanted to say, how do I go back to what I start with? How do I make this go back to what I started with the, the parent function? Hopefully you're saying to yourself, oh, well, that's just four less. And this one here is just four less. And this one here is four less. Oh, that's the same pattern. So what if I take my x value, whatever I have for x, I subtract four and then I square it. Wouldn't that be the equation for this line? Most definitely. Okay, so this is the moment you've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. How do you move a parabola left or right? What's really happening is you're looking at adding or subtracting inside a set of parentheses and then squaring that value. This in here is what moves, in our case, the parabola. Which direction, guys? To the right. It's a little backwards from what you might think. Okay, this is a minus four. That's not a mistake on my part. This is subtract four. When you subtract four, you're actually gonna take, and I'm gonna clean this up just so that we can get a fresh start looking at it. Oh, I don't wanna erase all of that. Um, what's really happening is our parabola is moving four spaces to the right from where I started from. I started here and I moved it four spaces to the right, but you wanna think about how did I go back? Okay, I gotta go back four spaces. So that's what gives you the minus four. Moving to the right, means you're gonna add or, you're gonna, um, sorry. Moving to the right means you're going to subtract in here. Moving to the left means that you would add, okay? So last but not least, let's talk about vertex form. And if you didn't get all of that written down, feel free to go back and pause. But vertex form is this. This is the formula we you wanna write down. If the equation is given to you in this formula here, y equals a times x minus h with parentheses to the second power, then plus k. If your equation is given to you in that form, you're in luck because it will tell you exactly where the vertex point is, okay? It will be a movement either left or right, and then up or down, depending on what the h value and the k value are, okay? So what does this really mean? Here is also really important to our formula. The vertex is at h comma k. It's very important to understand that that subtraction kind of moves your parabola maybe to the opposite direction that you might think when going left or right. Okay, it's x minus h built in to the formula. Okay, so this might be a minus one, but the vertex would be at x of positive one. Okay, um, and then the axis of symmetry, we can very easily get from there. Whatever your x value is, is gonna to have to be your axis of symmetry. And then these are just for if you guys, you guys know that. The a value is greater than one, it opens up. If it's less than one, it opens down. Okay, I don't know how much of that little box you wanna get down in your notes. Just the formula would be the minimum, but let's try one if you are ready. All right, let's try one. Feel free to pause and copy down things if you'd like to copy them down. All right, but try and summarize that so you're not writing every single thing down. Vertex form is even better for grabbing than the intercept form we learned there. So what is going on here? All right, well, I have 
this equation is in vertex form. Hopefully you're saying, oh, it looks similar to this here. I can see the H and the K. So if I have a plus two here, that means H has to be negative two. But if I have a plus two, plus three, that means K is at positive three. Okay, and your vertex is at H comma K. So my vertex is negative two comma positive three for this parabola. Negative two comma positive, oopsie, that's positive four, um, positive three. So here is my vertex, bam. I don't have to do anything else besides look at the formula and I know right where the vertex is. If I know where the vertex is, I can then draw in my axis of symmetry. So I know this is the middle line of my parabola. I have a negative one in here that's helpful to see which way it's going to open up or down. But I know that, you know, negative two comma positive three is my vertex. Is there anything else from this that I could get? Could I get the y-intercept from this equation? Unfortunately, I can't just by looking at it. How would I get the y-intercept? It's more work than you might think. Negative one times x plus two squared plus three. Okay, what you'd have to do is some foiling. Okay, you'd have to foil this, foil that out, you'd get negative one x squared plus I guess it would be 4x. The inners and the outers would be 2x and 2x plus 4 plus 3. Now multiply this in to make negative 4 plus 3. Your y-intercept to me, doing it very quickly, looks like it would be negative 1. But all I'm trying to say is it ain't so easy to find. y down here is negative 1. Okay, and then that would be over there. Um, so each form has its positives and its negatives. If, it, if your equation looks like this here, you're like, oh, I know the vertex right away, that's great. But you don't know the y-intercept right away. And you might not know the zeros right away. Okay, so every different, you know, you have to have the right tool for the right um, problem, you know, depending on what information they give you. I'm not going to go through this one as well, because we have plenty of time to go through some problems together in class. Um, we come back together on Monday. But if you have any questions, please feel free to write them down. I'm happy to go over this again with you guys on Monday. Have a fabulous weekend, and I will see you very soon.